Welcome back to the 105. Arch Madness is officially here as the youngest Manning made his debut over the weekend, leading Texas to a 51 to three victory over ULM. Drew, a little bit of an uneven start for Arch Manning, 15 to 29, 258 yards, two touchdowns, two INTs. The standard is very high if your last name is Manning, but I believe you have some context that sheds a little bit of light, make you feel better about the performance overall. I do, teacher Patagna. I know you're going to have us give grades for Arch Manning's first performance, right? So I needed to get some context here, right? I went back and I looked. Last five quarterbacks that have gone number one overall in the NFL draft, what did their first college start look like? And the bad news, if you're Arch Manning, none of them threw an interception. So he threw two against ULM. But still, uh, I I think this is kind of notable. Uh, Caleb Williams, his, his first career start at Oklahoma against TCU, 18 of 23, 295 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions, also ran for 66 yards and a score. Bryce Young, back in 2021, when he was at Alabama, took on Miami, 344 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. That one was good. Trevor Lawrence, his first career start at Clemson. Remember, they played him a little bit as a true freshman. He eventually won out. He takes on Syracuse. He goes 10 of 15 for 93 yards before he gets knocked out of the game. And then the final two, Cooper, Joe Burrow, 2018 against Miami, 11 of uh, of 24, 140 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. So that was a bit of a rough one. And then finally, Kyler Murray at Oklahoma back in 2015 against South Carolina, 20 of 28, 223 yards, one touchdown, also ran for 156 yards in a score. So I don't know where Arch stacks up against that. Um, but I thought, to me, I, I liked him taking some chances there. I, you know, he pushes the ball down the field. I know, Coop, you were locked into this game. It only got a small screen for me on Saturday night. I was kind of watching Miami Wanted to check on what was going on between Oklahoma and Tennessee. What did you think? I thought he played well, you know, and, and here's the thing. I think the, uh, you, you got to be able to look at it, dive back into the all 22 and, and, and get a better feel. But, you know, Arch Manning was very close to having a similar stat line that he had against Texas San Antonio that kind of turned the college football world into a frenzy five touchdown performance. One of those on the ground with a 67 yard run. And I guess I'll start there. I expected more on the ground. I expected him more to be schemed up into the game plan. But if you take a step back, Quinn Ewers already hurt. You got Trey Owens, a true freshman, right behind him. I understand why Steve Sarkeesian doesn't want to run him. The biggest biggest thing that stood out to me, how about this? 11 attempts over 20-plus yards. And Drew, he completed three of those. Uh, one, I believe, was intercepted. Another one for a touchdown as well. But I think he's the most comfortable in the deep third. I think that's what Arch Manning does the best right now in, in, in regards to his development, where he needs to get better is the short to intermediate. If you were to knock him coming out of high school, there were times where the happy feet, similar to his uncle Peyton, would get a little hot in terms of his internal clock being sped up. I think timing, anticipation, he still leaves a little bit to be desired, but all things that can improve with reps. And I think that's the most important thing to take out of this performance from Arch Manning is that he actually got the reps and the opportunity to run with the first team. The other thing about this, Drew, If he plays within himself, uses the outlet, Steve Sarkeesian does a tremendous job scheming these running backs up in the passing game. He had twice where he overthrew Jadon Blue for would-be touchdowns. Arch Manning, that would be the biggest thing in terms of where he can get better is you have a very good offensive line. You have elite playmakers at every position, wide receiver, running back, and tight end. Use them as a compliment. You don't have to be Superman anymore like you had to be in high school. Use the resources around you, and if you do that, then everything will take care of itself. Overall, I gave him a C. Uh, You said I was a hard teacher. My mom was a first-grade teacher for 30-plus years. Maybe it runs in the family. But, Drew, he's got a high standard. The good thing is he's under Steve Sarkeesian. If you heard his halftime interview, it's all about not turning the ball over, playing within the structure of the offense. He can get better in those areas. I think that's very fair to say he's not that far off. Like I said, three or four throws, you get those back. We're probably breaking this down in a very, very different light. (laughs) Coop, my mom was also a teacher. I'll say this. You gave him a C. I don't know if C's fly in the Manning household. They tuck in their shirts there, uh, the Mannings do. Is that a C with a smiley face or a frown? C with uh, uh, we got an opportunity to get better. 
right? And, and if you were Archie, if you were Peyton, and if you were Eli, that would be the standard that they would be held to as well. It's no different for Arch Manning. He was the number one player in the country. Throw that out the window. The Manning last name, the legacy that comes with that as well. There is a lot of room to get better for Arch Manning. I think that's the exciting thing when you're breaking down Arch Manning is, wow, there is so much space for this guy to take a jump, not only from his redshirt freshman to his sophomore year, but years beyond that as well. So I'm excited to see his development, especially as he gets exposed to better competition. The biggest thing for him, do not turn the ball over. Steve Sarkeesian talked about that at halftime. If he does that, he's going to be okay. Had some trouble with that during high school, but if he cleans that up, he's going to be all right. 